Ladies and gentlemen, Barton Drake speaking. This week I've selected for our drama case history number 132 from my book, Mystery is My Hobby. I call it Death is One and Three. Come now. Don't think for a minute that you can bluff me. Not me, Alexander Corvell. I've been a publisher for too long. Every trick in the game has been tried on me. Just who do you think you are to come barging in here like this? I make my own rules. I hire whom I please. I fire whom I please. I discard whom I please. I marry whom I please. And let me assure you, if you think for one minute that I'm impressed by your ridiculous... But... Finishing dinner at my club, and George, the head waiter, came up carrying the telephone. Yes, hello. Barton Drake speaking. No, I'm already. Oh, hello, Inspector. Any your dinner yet? Just about by. Well, here's a little something for dessert. Inspector, will you please get to the point? Okay, but grab on to something. A friend of yours has just been murdered. A friend of mine? Who? Alexander Corvell, the publisher. Corvell? Well. I'd hardly say he's exactly a friend. What did it happen, Inspector? In the dump over on the Lower East Side. The Carlton, to be exact. Don't touch anything. I'll be right over. You'll what? Hey, are you trying to tell me my business ain't... I'll certainly be here. Not more than ten minutes. Well, this is a dingy place, Inspector. Yeah, I can't understand it. Not with a guy with all Corvell's money. That's strange if you knew the man, Inspector. With all his wealth, he had a cheap common street. What do you mean? Well, these rooms in this cheap hotel, for instance. Corvell maintained them for the express purpose of embarrassing distinguished people who came to visit him. It amused him no end. <laughs> it's nutty of you, Edmund. Well, he had more hangouts than this. Corvell used to toss some pretty wicked orgies at times. Places like this were very suitable for his purposes. But you said he wasn't a friend of yours. He wasn't, Inspector, but I knew him very well. He had plenty of enemies, so I'm not a bit surprised at his death. Well, it doesn't make much difference. We, uh... Why don't you take me into the murder room, Inspector? Oh, sure, sure. You can come in if you want to. Come on. Thank you. Boys, they're checking the room for prints. Taking a few photographs. Not necessary. But we have to follow the routine. Hmm. Shopping? Yeah, twice. There's a gun there lying alongside the body. Sure it wasn't suicide, hmm? Sure. Gun was wiped clean. Well, Inspector, I can't see that you seem overly excited. <laughs> Why should I be? I've already caught the guy. <laughs> oh, congratulations, Inspector. Who is it? Eric Masters. Eric Masters? Mm -hmm. You mean Cordell's editor was discharged last week? That's the guy. We don't even have to look for a motive. Corvell already furnished this one by printing all that stuff in his own newspaper, telling us what a bum this Masters is. Hmm. If you don't mind, Inspector, I'd like to have a talk with Masters. Now, see here, Bart, I've got the guy all called. I don't want you to go... <laughs> no, wait a minute. Don't get excited. I'm not trying to spoil your case, Inspector. I know Masters, that's all, and I can't conceive of him doing such a thing. Just to satisfy my own curiosity, I'd like to know why. Okay, he's in here. All right. You can wait outside, Riley. I'll look at him. Sure, Inspector. Hello, Eric. You've been like that ever since we nabbed him. Won't say a word. Won't you answer a few questions, Eric? Okay. 
tell you, don't pass if you don't want to. That's the way with him when they're guilty. I won't talk. You must have a good case against him, Inspector, if you're holding him. What is it? Well, the desk clerk says that this guy came in the hotel and went right upstairs. In less than two minutes, he heard two shots. Mm -hmm. Right after that, this guy, Masters, came downstairs and went out in a rush. Clark figured something was wrong, so he yelled for a cop and a tool up in the corner and nabbed him. I see. Is that what happened, Masters? All right, if that's the way you want it. Is that all, Inspector? Well, not quite. The uh, clerk says he also saw a red-headed dame leave the lobby by the side entrance right after Masters came down. Oh. But I can't see how that has anything to do with the case. Might have been anybody. I'll get it. Inspector Dance, did Oh, yeah? Fine. Fine, bring him right up. That's the way to work, Bart. That's the way a good, efficient police department works. Oh. And what are you being so smug about, Inspector? The redhead, the boy's a gunner. Well, that is quick work, Inspector. Mr. Drake. Yes, Mr. Masters. You coming to life at last? What's the use? I thought it over. That got me cold. Hey, wait a minute. What is this, a confession? Yes. Why should I prolong it? I killed Alexander Corvell. I'm glad I did it. If I had to, I'd do it all over again. Well, now, that's better, Masters. That's the best way. It'll go much easier with him. He was a dirty, overbearing stinker. He thought he owned every man who worked for him. Fine, I'm glad. fine, fine. I'll call headquarters. Inspector. Uh, yeah, Mark? Don't you think before you go too far, we should uh, interview the redhead? Well, I don't see much use. We've got a confession. She probably doesn't know anything anyway. I know, I know, but uh, just for luck. Okay, if you want to. By the way, uh, where is she? Boys have her in the next room, I guess. All right, let's go in. Sure, sure. You're going to stay with Masters, Ronnie. Right. Oh, what is it? Well, Inspector, is this your redhead? Mrs. Carvel, I didn't expect you oh, with the... Oh, it's terrible. Poor Alexander. Yeah, must have happened just after you left him here this afternoon. How did you know I'd be here? The clerk downstairs saw a redheaded girl leave. One of the boys followed you and picked you up. You see, our men were practically on the scene of the murder when it happened. Of course, you don't think I had anything to do with it. Well, I... Perhaps you don't know it, Mrs. Carvel, but Eric Masters Oh, I, has... I didn't think I could get away with it. But he deserved it. I'm sorry I didn't kill him sooner. Uh, then you... Yes, I did it. I did it. What? He treated me like a dog. I couldn't stand it anymore. I had to do it. I had to. But Eric Masters said Inspector. that... Inspector... Uh, hadn't you better answer the door? Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. Inspector, I got another minute. Say, what is this? The clerk downstairs says, says maybe he made a mistake. He, he thinks maybe this is the one instead of the other. Why can't anyone ever make a positive identification? Won't you bring her in, Inspector? Yeah, yeah, I suppose so. Bring her in, Raleigh. Yes, sir. What? Hello, Lois. Why? Huh? Why, do you know everybody? Well, I certainly know Lois Benson. Yeah, yeah, who is she? Who is she? What's she got to do I'm with this? I'm Mr. Corbell's private secretary. Oh, well, what are you doing here? Where'd you come from? Well, I knew that Mr. Corbell was stopping here, and I thought perhaps... Here's I... everybody nuts. Here I had a perfect case. Simple as night and day. Now all of a sudden everything goes haywire. You know that Mr. Corbell has been murdered, Lois, don't you? He... Oh, no, no. <laughs> I killed him, Lois. I killed him. Why, are you... Jean, I'm going to scratch your eyes out. Rather, I can't enjoy it. Riley, Riley, take Mrs. Carvel out of here for a moment. That's it. I'd like to speak to Lois alone. Well, dear, go ahead, go ahead, around. Okay, come on, lady. <laughs> you loved Alexander Carvel, didn't you, Lois? Yes, Dad, I did. I loved him. And it was because I loved him that... that I killed him. What? Oh, no. Uh, here, Inspector, here's a chair. I think you'd better sit down. Thanks, Sergeant. I'll go right on in. Oh, hang it right high. Where you been all morning? Oh, just doing a bit of investigating. How are your uh, three murderers today? 
<laughs> Unless they got more sleep last night than you did. Oh, quit rubbing it in. Anything new from your point of view? Only that we got three written and signed confessions. Good, but Good. I'm slowly and surely going nuts. <laughs> in fact, it isn't that bad. Just put your feet up on the desk and uh, let's talk for a bit. Yeah. Talk. Don't <laughs> see what good talk's going to do. Been too much talk already. Hmm. How about the gun that was found by the body? Was it really the murder weapon? Yeah, ballistics checked it. It was the one. Fingerprints? White clean, like I thought it would be. Well, that's interesting. Not very important, except in one respect. What's that? I'll let you know later. However, it's helpful. There might have been too many fingerprints on the gun, then where would we be? Where the devil are we now? Now, <laughs> Inspector, calm yourself, calm yourself. This is the first time in all my years on the job that I've ever had to prove who didn't commit a crime. Inspector, you're taking the wrong approach entirely. Stick to the standard routine. You can still prove who did it. Yeah, fine, fine. Lovely. How? This gang all want to sit in the hot seat. Why? What's the matter with them? Are they all crazy? <laughs> Let's go find out. Huh? Oh, go ahead, go ahead. If you got any ideas, use them. Mine completely run out. Good. Now, if you'll have them sent in here one at a time, we uh, might be possible to get them Okay. A message brought in, will you, Ronnie? Right away, Inspector. You uh, haven't told any of them that the others have confessed, have you, Inspector? No. They've all been in different cells. Good. Don't. No. Oh, come on in, message. Have a chance. What do you want now? I confess. Mr. Drake wants to ask a few questions. There isn't any more to say. Well, maybe there is. Uh, wait out in the hall, will you, Ryder? Sure. Let's start at the beginning, Eric. You say you killed Alexander Corbell. That's right, isn't it? I said I did, didn't I? Yes. But uh, you haven't yet told us the motive. What difference does that make? Oh, you will have to have a good one if you expect to make your confession. Oh, I have a motive, all right. Corbell fired me last week. He fired me from a post that I've worked 15 long years to win. Isn't that motive enough? Mm, I think a better motive would be that you're in love with Lois Stenson, Corbell's private secretary, don't you, Eric? What's Lois got to do with it? You were jealous because Corbell himself had designs on Lois, and Lois wasn't entirely disinterested. Isn't that right, Mr. Masters? Well... How did you dig that out? What better place than down at the newspaper office, a place where for the past 15 years you've been the editor. Well, suppose it is true. That ought to prove I killed him. Yes, yes, indeed. A very good motive, Eric. Excellent. Love and revenge. So, you insist that you killed your husband, eh, Mrs. Cavell? I did. And again, I say I'm not sorry. What was your motive? Alexander was going to divorce me. So he could marry someone else? I suppose that was the basis of our trouble. But it wasn't why I killed him. Oh, you have a better reason? He wanted a divorce, but I loved him too much to give it to him. Even though you knew he loved someone else? What of it? He was always looking at other women. But he never had the same one very long. Oh, I knew what he was. I knew he was a loss, but he was my man, and I loved him in spite of it. I couldn't help it. Hmm. Just why did you come to his suite at the Carlton last night? I came to beg of him just once more to try and make our marriage work. And he refused? He was contemptuous, furious. He drew a pistol and told me that if I refused to give him a divorce, he'd kill me. He said that no frail little woman like me could keep him from doing what he wanted to do. Not the great Alexander Corbell. Oh, so that rat pulled a gun on you, huh? He did. What happened then? Well, I stood there frightened to death. I begged him not to do it. I told him that no matter who he was, he couldn't get away with murder. But he just laughed at me. Why, that dirty... Maybe she's got a good case of self-defense for it. He said he made the rules. He was always saying that he made the rules. I could see his finger tightening on the trigger. I don't know how, but somewhere I got the strength and courage to lunge at him. Somehow I managed to twist the pistol toward his chest. I guess I did pull the trigger. I must have. I don't know. I don't know. And the next thing I knew, he was dead. I killed him, I guess. I killed him. 
Now that it's all over, I'm glad. Poor kid. Well, I don't know what Master's idea is, but her story sounds like the real stuff to me. You haven't forgotten, have you, Inspector, that we still have another suspect? Another confessed murderer? Oh, yeah, yeah, that uh, Lois Benson name. Hmm. You know, well, but... Will you have her sent in, Inspector? Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Send the Benson girl in, Riley. Right away, Inspector. Goodbye. I just thought of something. So, this Benson dame was in the room over at the hotel when Mrs. Corbell said she'd killed her husband. Yes, I remember. But I thought you didn't want any of them to know that the others had confessed. Well, in this case, it uh, might be all the more interesting. Here she is. Yes, thanks, Riley. Come in and sit down, Lois. In go, Riley. Now, Lois, we're playing a little game of motors. That's easy. I had plenty. Yes, I rather imagine you did. How's this for a guess? You were in love with Alexander Corvell, Lois. I even imagine he promised to marry you after he'd divorced his wife as he intended to do. But Corvell, being Corvell, it didn't come off. Let's say he uh, met a platinum blonde that he sent her to Bermuda or to some such place for safekeeping. And then he threw you to the wolves with his usual ruthlessness and contempt. How does that stack up? I don't have to stand that kind of talk. I... Oh, what's the difference? You're right, mostly. Only it wasn't a blonde, it was another redhead. <laughs> Alexander treated me like a bum. And if I had become a bum, it would have tickled the lug no way. I still don't see what you hope to gain by killing me. If you know women, you do, Bob. Oh, I just don't care. I've been brooding over the whole dirty mess for days. And I finally reached the point where... Life isn't worth living. Then why didn't you take the easy way out? Because I wasn't going to leave the louse around to ruin any other girl's life. He'd have done too much of that already. By the way, Lois, where did you get that pistol? Why, why I've had it for five or six years. What difference does that make? Mm, no, none at all, Lois. Not now. None at all. Ah, nuts. As far as I'm concerned, they can hang all three of them. <laughs> Inspector, you know you can't do that. Yeah, no. One's all the law allows. But which one? Which one? <laughs> Inspector, so help me. I'm surprised at you. They just got through telling you. This isn't funny, Bart. Can't you realize the spot I'm in? Yeah. Three people admit killing the guy. Three of them. How is a guy going to solve a murder like that? <laughs> well, Inspector, if you get all three of them together, this time, say, uh, back at the Carlton Hotel... I'll see if I can't get them to tell you all over again. What's the idea of these other people, Bob? Why can't you leave me alone? Two of you haven't told the truth, that's all, Mrs. Cavell. What could they tell? How could any of them tell why or how I killed Carvel? It was strictly my own business. I didn't get any help from anybody. You, Eric. You killed Alexander. Why, you couldn't, Eric, I... Eric, you're either a very brave or a very foolish man to admit you're a murderer. Why so? I was practically caught in the act. There were no fingerprints on the weapon, you know. A good attorney might have been able to get you out of it. What's the idea, Bob? I've confessed, haven't I? What are you trying to do, torture me? What are you trying to pull, Mrs. Corvell? Trying to get yourself a lot of cheap publicity? Or is this some trick the police have put you up to? It's no trick, I assure you, Lord. Well, then what's she confessing for? I killed the skunk. I made a clean breast of the whole thing. Anyway, he deserved to die, so that's that. Shut up, Lois. You didn't kill a fly. How could you when I did it? Bart, let's get on with this thing. If there are any more confessions, I'll sign one myself. Let them talk confessions. But it's crazy. Every other case I've ever handled, the suspects all fight to hang it on the others. Here, this bunch is all trying to hang themselves. Don't tell me they all killed Corbell. No, no, only one of them. Now, Masters, as I told you before, you uh, have a perfect motive. Two perfect motives, in fact. 
Revenge for being fired and your love for Lois here. Lois, whom you thought Cordell was about to marry. Sure, that was my motive, I'll admit it. And you were apprehended at the scene of the crime, or at least you were running away from it. And as for you, Mrs. Cordell, your story is the weakness of the lot. I can understand why you confessed murdering your husband, but I should have thought you'd have realized that your story wouldn't hold up. I don't see where... Your story, Lois, is the best one. And you also have the best motive. But I tell you, she didn't do it. Master's motive, revenge and love. Mrs. Carvel's self-defense. And yours, Lois, hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. However, the gun, the murder weapon, hops up to knock your entire story into a cocked hat. What do you mean, Mike? Like? You remember, Inspector, that Lois has claimed to have had that gun in her possession for the past five or six years? Yeah. But she couldn't have. Why not? Think back, Inspector. Think back. You're sure having a lot of fun for yourself. Well, Inspector, first Masters. According to the hotel clerk, Masters had uh, been out of sight less than two minutes when the shots were heard. Immediately afterward, Masters came down the elevator and went out. He was immediately apprehended by Officer O'Toole. So... That lets you out, Masters, definitely. Why? The time element, of course. Not enough time to halfway allow you to commit the deed, and certainly not to also stop and wipe the fingerprints off the gun. No, Masters, you're as innocent as a baby. Why, you... Sit you, down, you, sit down, you, Eric. You got a I told shut you off. to shut up. Now then, you, Jean Corbell, let's look at your story. Go ahead. I've already told you everything I know. I doubt it. How could you, standing in front of Corvell, as you claim, how could you have reached out and grabbed the pistol he was pointing at you and turned it back towards his body before the trigger was pulled? Well, I just did, that's all. No, you didn't, my dear young lady. You're a small woman, and Alexander Corvell was big and powerful. If his finger had been packing on the trigger, as you say in your story, the impact of your hand striking his would have touched it off, and you would have been the one that was killed instead of Corvell. You must try it sometime. You're crazy. And you, Lois, you made a great try, but the cards were all stacked against you. And, as you all say, Alexander Corvell probably deserved what he got. Nobody's going to miss him too much. And least of all... Jean Corvell, his wife, who was the one who killed him. Of course I killed him. I've been trying and trying to tell you. But not in self-defense, my dear. Yours was cold, deliberate murder. That's a lie. Oh, no, it isn't. Corvell was going to divorce you, cut you off without a cent. You decided not to stand for that, my dear. So you cooked up this self-defense idea. You know that with Corvell's reputation and your uh, knees, you could make any jury weep with sympathy. The least you could draw would be a short term for manslaughter, if even that. And there you would be sitting on top of about $25 million. I'll still claim self-defense. But you won't get away with it. I told you your story was the weakest of the lot. Why should your husband threaten to kill you when you refused him a divorce, when all he'd have to do is go to Reno? Was that the best you could think of? Well, I... In fact, that's exactly what he planned to do, and that's the reason you killed him. But it was his own pistol. Yes, I was waiting for you to come to that. That's the only part of your story that's the truth. The only part that stands up. Also, the part that convicts you. Hey, I'll come on, Miss Carmel. I guess I'd better take you back to headquarters and book you for murder. Oh, you lousy leech. All of you. I don't know why you all wanted to claim the honor of killing the miserable rat. But if you'd kept your mouth shut, I'd have gotten away with it. Sure, that's exactly why I did claim the honor, Mrs. Corbell. I was afraid you would get away with it. Why, you... Shut up, shut up, all of you. Don't anybody even open the mouth. You want to get this thing started all over again? Sugar, Inspector? Yeah, three spoons. Mm-hmm. Cream? Have a minute. Okay. Now, come down and relax. Well, I booked her, but only on your say-so. I still don't know why I did it. Don't you, Inspector? No, I can't figure that. Master's guy. I can't figure out why he confessed. Love, Inspector. Love. He was madly in love with Lois Benson. He knew that Cavell was giving her a run around, so when he heard that Cavell had been killed, he naturally thought that Lois had killed him. He did it to protect her. Love. It's in all sorts of jam. Yes, that's true. Love is like that, Inspector. What about Lois's confession? <laughs> Love again, Inspector. 
She wasn't trying to protect Master. No, no, indeed. Unfortunately for poor Lois, she honestly loved Alexander Corvell, that though he was. But he'd already given her the gag. That is, Inspector. Well, you said... Yes, I said. But I was only making a supposition. You remember, we never actually proved that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sure. When Lois heard Mrs. Corvell admit that she had killed her husband... Lois knew that something was up. She knew Mrs. Corvell. She knew she was pulling some kind of an angle. Lois figured that by also confessing to the same crime, her confession as well as Mrs. Corvell's would be thoroughly investigated. Yeah, I see what you mean. And Mrs. Corvell would be caught and punished for killing the man that she, Lois, loved. Well, it's all too deep for me. More sugar, Inspector? Yeah, three spoons. Three spoons. More cream, Inspector? Hey, 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 what is this? I've already had sugar. I only asked. Hey, look, Mark. How about that gun? What about the gun? You said that the fact that it was Corvell's own gun clinched the case against Mrs. Corvell. Why? It had to be Corvell's own gun to make the self-defense story stand up, didn't it, Inspector? Well, oh. So, of course, Mrs. Corvell knew it was her husband's gun when she first told the story. Yeah. And that definitely places her at the scene of the crime, doesn't it, Inspector? Uh-huh. Besides, when Lois Benson told her story... She said she'd had the murder weapon in her possession for the last five or six years. That's right, she did. But how could she, Inspector? How could she when it was Corvell's gun? Oh, nuts. <laughs> hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Huh? I got one more question. One more, all right. How come this Eric Masters guy happened to be there in the hotel right at the time of the murder? Why, Inspector, I'm surprised at you. Didn't you ask him? No, I forgot. Inspector, I'm afraid it's about time you gave up mystery as a business and took it up as a hobby.